everyone. Welcome to Art and Up. I'm Christine Ballard. And I'm Melanie Karras Moniotis. And this is a place where creatives connect, cultivate, and support each other's artistic journey. Today, we have the lovely Gillian Haig, all the way from Victoria, lockdown Victoria. And hi, Gillian. Welcome to the program. Hi. Hi. Now, we've got yeah. a thing we're, we're starting. She's a contemporary expressionist. expressionist, yes, which we will see her work, lots of beautiful colour and shapes. And we're going to take get Gillian to take us through a bit of her house to the studio because her whole life is art. And so <laughs> thanks for joining us, Gillian. We're going to get you to have a little walk through your house and we'll end up in the studio. You can see Gillian's well, got vegetable things there. Yes, I have, yes. Um that's a, a, a painting I've recently done, a, a bit of an experiment, and I just loved the texture over texture and glazes and, um, yeah. And what's Quite, that called, Gillian? What's, pardon? What's that painting called? Actually, I've forgotten. <laughs> I've forgotten is a terrible name for a painting, but it's beautiful. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. I actually changed it from, it was called Celebration and um, it could still be because it was part of the lockdown um, thing and I've painted over and over and over it many times. A bit like lockdown in Melbourne, seven yeah, times over, over and over, over and again. And over. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, Gillian, and you've got some vegetable pieces there that you're known yeah. for? Yeah, they're lovely. Now, Gillian, you, you have a bit of a garden. You're a bit of a gardener, aren't you? Yeah, I've got a lot going on. Hey, this is um, just a, a wall. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. So I've got, I've got um, you know, things. I do have things going on, you know, like whatever kind of takes my fancy. Yeah. But, you know, things can get a bit colourful. Works and, on paper, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, oh, you can see out the window, it's, uh, I'm surrounded by, you know, trees and... Yeah, take us for a walk. Yeah, okay. so Gillian work, lives on the Mornington Peninsula, which is a beautiful part of the world in Victoria, and they have been victim to a lot of lockdowns over the break, but she has this amazing... Even the walls <laughs> get drawn on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, the walls get drawn on. And they I use think you can... Anyway. You can see gillian has got all these beautiful different coloured walls, mm. which really highlights her artworks there too. You can There's see little, little, little studies of things. Beautifully. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of old works too from the past, you know, that I keep and, um, yeah. Quite a I, small I work small. in different spots. You know? Yeah, so this is your works on paper spot a lot of the time, isn't it? That spot there. It is, oh, yeah. And it's cold, you no, know, there's a bit of uh, there's some inspiration in my garden. Yeah. Of um of fruit trees and temples and you know, it just depends. It's pretty cold here today. Um what's cold, Gillian? <laughs> it's not that cold, but it's <laughs> And I have to be careful going down my stairs because it's very slippery today. This is, oh, this is my studio. Separate wow. shed. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So it's, um, it's Do you have a lovely. Heating in the studio? Any heating? Yeah. Oh, it's a really cozy spot. So welcome. Welcome to my studio. This is where all the magic happens. And she's got a stack of all, oh, yeah. lovely new canvases ready mm. to be created upon. And, and, and there's a lots bit of a look at um, the type of work that Gillian does. It's lots of layers of colours. And there's, there's a particular light in Mornington too. It's got this, like, soft, vibrant light. And I think that that filters through Gillian's mm. work there. Um, my favourite pieces are her big, giant pieces. And they're very... Uh, welcoming I think her works really invite you into the spaces and then a little bit comedy in some of the pieces you, you might find a little critter in some of them they might be the earlier works before but maybe we will sit down with you yeah. now Lynn, and we'll talk to you properly yeah because <laughs> I'm really desperate to ask you 
looking around, you'd think you were definitely always a creative person. Were you always a creative person? I think I was without knowing it. Uh, you know, I was surrounded by, I grew up on a farm, surrounded by wide open space, which gives you that opportunity to just be creative and allow your imagination to develop as a child. So, yes, I was. Did you and I was that? surrounded by creativity in my house. I think my mum was a piano player and we sewed, knitted, um, drew, you know, we had to do our own thing on a farm. You're isolated. Mm, so you sort of give yourself self-entertainment, don't you? You just sent out for a day and just make your own fun. But yeah. uh, when was it in, in your, you know, childhood growing up that you decided that you wanted to be an artist, that that was the thing that you were going to pursue? Or did you in the beginning? Did you do anything before that? No, I didn't. Um, I, I think I was probably about 15, 16 and really got a, an interest in um, painting and drawing at school. And then I did a TOP year, which was a tertiary orientation program for what was Form 6, Year 12. Right. And I did all art subjects. I was very lucky. Yeah. Offered at that time because I was at a private school and I was like, oh, my God, I don't think I can do English, history, <laughs> all those subjects because I, my brain was heading in the art direction. And um, I got to do everything, ceramics and painting, drama, I did everything uh, and then I knew what I wanted to do by the time I was 18. And then after that, where did you go? What did you? I, I got into three institutes but I chose RMIT in Melbourne because that is uh, what was uh, advised by my lecturers, by my teachers in Year 12 and uh, it was amazing. It was a wonderful art school and a lot of uh, well-known artists, practising artists were teaching. So you're off to a kind of a good start with... Yes, absolutely. Oh, I loved you yeah. because of that because mm. they were actually practising international artists yeah. teaching. Mm. So uh, at what point in your journey did you say, this is it, I, wa I want my career to be as an artist? I think... Um, Probably about second year, third year of art school, I, I um, you know, got to know more artist friends. It was just everything we talked and walked art. And uh, I took a studio in inner West Melbourne, a grungy um, warehouse space with other artists. And, I mean, it was just a great lifestyle, you know. We just had a ball and we produced art along with it. So, yeah, it was at the time for me around the same time as Raw Studios was set up in Fitzroy, mm -hmm. um, but I was already in West Melbourne and I, yeah, I used to hang out in Fitzroy but not, I didn't join that group, but it was, I was in parallel with what they were doing, mm. hence expressionist style of painting. Right, that's interesting, yeah. So we can we can sort of say, and then was from there that you went on and, you know, pursued, was it to pursue solo shows or get representation or what was the, the next uh, step from there? Well, I painted in my studio then. For, I, I actually won a travelling scholarship to Europe. So then I went overseas, kept my studio, um, and when I came back I was ready to work in my studio again. Um and that was all fired up. But I found that being female was it a bit tricky. Right. <laughs> Me, um, and I felt quite isolated. So I actually did a, a studied teaching as well as I was still painting. But, yeah, I, I, I went into that teaching realm, but I'd never taught full time in the... <laughs> When you yeah. say being female was tricky, can you just elaborate a little on that? Yeah, it, it just, um, I, I felt that, uh, well, I felt that the guys that I went to art school with, they were streamlined a bit through to 
um, galleries and things, whereas for girls we were left to our own devices, you mm. know, but what was that? Back oh, in the 80s, what was that? I mean, I made my own way with my group of friends, artists, um, and we had our own shows in the end. I mean, I actually had a baby and... Um, by 1985, I'd had a baby and I took a little bit of time off, but then I got back into painting and had group shows, but it wasn't in that mainstream art realm that I felt we were we was destined to be because that's how we were trained. This is the only way to be is in high art realm. And, um, yeah, it... it um, it was a disappointment for me that there was no mentorships or, you know, um, encouragement by anyone else for us to go that way. We were definitely seen as we would be having children and that would be the end of... Even in the 80s. Years. Wow, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it was a male world, absolutely. Interesting. And Thank you for sharing that. I have to say, I for me, I've proved that wrong because I've never stopped painting. I only stopped painting for the time that I had a baby for, say, 18 months, and then I would start painting again. Oh, that, that, and that takes determination, do. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, but as you would do to take off any time in any career. Can you, speaking of time, can you tell us how do you schedule your time? Because you're prolific. You can see I'm, I'm spoiled for choice where to look. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I always, you know, did a bit of housework and then got painting when the kids were little and went out on the road and painted landscapes and all sorts of things. You know, it was um, a wonderful time. Now I tend to... Uh, puddle about a bit in the morning and by the afternoon I'm warmed up ready to go I find every day is a challenge to to produce because art is something we do on our own and continually charging yourself up is hard mm. but I sort of find a way to you know I'll get it grab a coffee down the street or you know um mess about but I'm always thinking about what's going to happen when I get into the studio that is my end goal is to get into the studio every day I work two or three days a week in a gallery so I know that I can't work for that that's a break in my time yeah. but studio painting is my first priority Right, and that's where you make most of your art, isn't it, Gillian? In this lovely space you have, and also through the house, as you can yeah. see. When I, when I painted vegetables, <laughs> when I did a show, all of vegetables, which did look amazing, I painted them most really all in the house. Right, it, yeah. It was, they were, I had it set up on the kitchen bench and my whole house was just canvases and, um, <laughs> context, yeah, and they were smaller works yeah. as well too, weren't they? They they weren't real. It was small, I just one was one fifty by one twenty. Oh, that's still big, yeah. Yeah, so it was a big painting, um, and I did quite long ones of coloured carrots, and you know it was crazy stuff. Mm. To mm. the, shows. but yeah, it. Um, I saw the beauty in those vegetables and and because I paint a lot of still life and fruit and things so um you know I actually went out and collected from growers and uh yeah so they and that yeah. area that that you live in is is rife with produce it's it's a, a very flourishing area it's yeah. well known for its mm -hmm. wine and its cheeses and 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 its organic produce so Where are we going to for Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be buying that ticket as soon as lockdown's over. Um, oh, yeah. Tell us. Peninsula, Mornington Peninsula. So <laughs> I'm, I'm also very uh, influenced by my surroundings and so I was very influenced um, when we first moved down to the Mornington Peninsula with the surroundings, the landscape. It's amazing. It's a, it's a painter's paradise and that was part of the reason we moved out of the city was just to be engulfed in that. And so I painted landscapes for a long time. 
and they're still they come through my work in different ways so all the paintings I've done of in the house of you know still life and then um, you know because when you've got kids you know you're sort of swinging between domestic and uh, trying to be professional <laughs> and uh, so I've combined a lot of my inspiration I've got high horizon lines always in that seems to me in the back of my paintings mm. because I've been I, I've lived in this landscape that's full of landscape and smaller skies oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. And let, let's talk um medium yes what materials tell us uh, talk us through your materials I can see the background uh, there's some yeah okay so um, I've got a, a lot of acrylic going on here. I, I used to paint a lot in, of oils, but I'm using acrylic at the moment um, and I'll stay with that. And, and coloured ink, I've discovered coloured ink. Um, one of the, like I, I like to draw a lot, but I find ink and sumi brushes give me um, an expressionist style of painting that um, I can do a thin line to a thick line and back again to create an interesting line. And, um, you know, that might form a whole idea for the painting I'm about to do. It's, um, uh, I could show you, I could go and get one and just hold it up. That would be great. This one's, uh, it might have a bit of reflection on it. Oh, no, it's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm using Sumi brushes. So um, they're pretty raw, you know. I've done a lot of trees like this, um, but they're, they're just a lovely brush. And I was taught at art school to do Sumi painting. Um, so, you know, your materials are pretty important what's your preferred ink um well i use art spectrum inks and um i used to just use black ink and water it down so you've got tones of gray to black mm. um but now i i discovered color i always thought ink was a bit you know daggy but in <laughs> fact it's absolutely <laughs> incredible <laughs> what did i think ink was daggy but um i think you know we sort of taught certain things. We were taught watercolour was an absolute no-no and things. And watercolour is the most wonderful medium. I, I've used so much watercolour in my life, but not in a traditional sense. Mm. I've used it as a, um, I've experimented with it. And I, I recommend experimenting, you know, and playfulness in painting. Mm, I think that's what comes out in your work, Gillian. There's this lovely complexity of works. But I think as an artist, we all like looking at um, other people's work where you can see it being made. The, you know, that's what people loved about Cezanne and the half-finished works. It's like, oh, I love the way that they put that colour over the things. And, and like you've mentioned there is that, you know, you've got a lot of works on the go and they're not finished yet and you'll go in and go, oh, that needs attending to. And so that life underneath there mm. gives it that. And it does. A, it is a reflection of, like, I look at your works and there's a, a busyness to them, but that's how your life is too. So it's sort yeah. of this sort of self-portrait and that Mornington light and that colour and playful. Mornington's known as a holiday area. It's, it's, it's very well known throughout the decades of the place where people went to beach holidays and things like that. And I think that lightness and that, like you mentioned, that playfulness um, filters not only through the medium and the way it's used but in what the product is at the end. And I think that mm. that's a really distinctive thing that has come through Without maybe you even trying, you know, it, it sort of evolved through that. But I'm, I'm loving those layers. And even, yeah. the fact, you know, talking about that recognition of the horizon line, but even the crossover of just your general day-to-day -day activities, just in, in looking briefly even, mm. you know, the composition behind you, you know, it's the layers of your life. It's your mm. back and forth and your planning and your thoughts during the day. They're all those layers are appearing and I, I feel like that gives it such vibrance. Yeah, and it's got a real energy. And I think when I was talking to Gillian earlier when you were doing the vegetables, you know, they're very pared back and they're 
they're sort of Literally. quiet. Yeah, they're very quiet <laughs> paintings. And I know then then you walk into your studio and there's all this stuff happening mm. and they're like, I think that's that that's conflict we all have yeah. though, isn't it? It's like I know I should be organised and tidy, but I love all this stuff going on. And a lot of artists, we I, I like to call them projects. You never really, and that's why I call artists you're not just a painter um, and that's clear you're a creative and, and create being a creative means you're never satisfied mm. you're always got projects on the go and there'll be a little bit of a broken piece of pottery and then you might put that together with that and you found a new brush and that pushing things mm. beyond what you've been taught we're a little bit we, we don't like to be content we've got that sort of um let's see what else you could do what about the trying times <laughs> Mm. What, like, what are the times where you just can't push through? And do you have any advice for artists? That okay. had, I have had quite a lot of that as well. Um, and it's taken me a lot to, um, especially when things change in your life, it's taken, it can take a lot to get back to the flow Um I can, I can say that, well, you have to do a lot of inner work as well on yourself, but with one's art, I just think I kept, I kept sketching. Um, a thumbnail sketches are a big thing. So, like, I don't know if you can see. Uh -huh. Oh, we got that. Yeah, we yep. can see that now, the reflection. So, are they fun? They're gorgeous. Mm. Yeah. Little, little, um, you know, it's not too hard for me to just, you know, do a little thumbnail sketch. It takes no energy <laughs> for me to just do that. And then I go, oh, yeah, that's that could be good. That could create something. And I may not ever do it or I may not be able to do it for a while. Um, but I know that the process is still going on. I've got something I can feel like, uh, yeah, I've, I can produce some ideas ready for when I can get back. Um, picking up the brush or what, it can be the hardest thing, but actually the hardest thing is getting into your studio. <laughs> yeah. And it's, um, yeah, I, I am sort of just every day I have to, yeah, make my way into my studio and it's never easy. Mm. It happens every day, weirdly. Uh -huh. Weirdly. So many obstacles for all of us and, and it is um, quite difficult sometimes just to actually get to that door. And then when you get in, it's, you know, you're not always feeling like you're able to get into the flow. Yeah. Um, and I just, I just um, throw a bit of paint around too. I don't, um, my way of working is so spontaneous and, in you know, I just let my intuition come in and it takes over, I suppose. So I, I will just, you know, throw a bit of paint on a canvas and not worry too much about what I was doing because I build layers. So um, I see something come from initially being loose on the canvas. So you respond to what is happens there and that's yeah. how it evolves rather than having a plan or an idea. It's yeah. got to be this yeah. or being, you know, held hostage to that, you yeah. know, the way that the materials yeah. work with each other might produce some shapes that sort of things happen. And then I think that's as a maturity as an artist, mm -hmm. you know, in the beginning we sort of copy something, we replicate it on a canvas and it has to be that. And I think from the outside looking in, that's what we call now confidence, isn't it? It's like, oh, I don't know what it's going to be. How do you know? How are you not worried about that? It's like, well, uh, there's heaps of other things to worry about. Innately, it comes. It just. It, I'm not. I don't want to think too hard mm. because that can tighten you up a bit. You know, um, thinking about um, having to think too hard. Social media. How important is that to you? Um, oh, it's it's. I absolutely love social media. Instagram, and then it can be your worst enemy. Um, <laughs> they how what everyone else is doing, um, but uh, and I'm I'm quite shy when it comes to really to posting things. I post li little amounts um, because I just don't want to overdo it, kind of thing. I I, I don't know. I just 
or I don't think that's good enough to put up or, you know, I, I have my self-doubts, plenty of self-doubts. Um, that's nice for people I, to know that. It's good for people to know that because, mm, you know, I right. hold my breath, I think, when I go to hit that button. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look so, at everyone else doing the other things. things and just don't look at it. What are the implications of posting that or, you know, whatever? Should I put that up? Um, but mm -hmm. I do feel I'd love this whole thing of being able to take a photo on an iPhone and put it on something on Instagram. Another I just layer. think it's genius. Yeah, it that's <laughs> absolutely amazing. And, you know, I, I do little things in, a, in sketchbooks, but I don't post them necessarily. Maybe I should post the, the workings of um, the mm -hmm. process. So in that the respect, it's so important. Yeah, mm. well, we, we think so. Is like that's the difference with uh, someone who's just producing work and then someone who's trying to be an, an artist. Is the process is the most important thing, mm. and the product should be sort of secondary to a point almost. Mm. It's it's not just what's made; it's how you made it that it we find is really interesting. That's that's the juice, right? Even just seeing the thumb, thumbnails. Yeah, like, like how yeah. you can get inside. You know, we we want other artists to show us how to see the world differently. That's that's what we get excited about mm. other artists for. So in okay. saying that, what's the hardest thing about being a painter or an artist or a creative? As I said, okay, um, what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> To be understood, to be, um, yeah, for people to see what you see and to appreciate. Uh, and, look, it, it, the process of painting can be hard, like, but you have to work through it. So you have to be brave. So, um, you know, I'm not brave and then all of a sudden I'm, I just, I'm brave, you know, and I'm perplexed by this fear and then brave you know universe just you know mm. i think it's um, it's an energy it is an energy enough it's almost for me like when you're saying that i just think about myself but it, it is that push and pull and constant problem solving and that no light without dark roller coaster but but it's knowing that when things aren't going you mm. know brilliantly that they they can be and to, they, to again, know, think on that you get both but where, where can we find you where can we yes can we, seek we you want out? to see your work and and make like, contact yes yeah well i'm on instagram as jillian hague artist mm -hmm. jillian with a g because people don't always get that right but um i'm on facebook as jillian hague but um I really post, you know, I move my, the Instagram stuff, I'll move it across to Facebook and I haven't, I still haven't got a website. So the Miss Professional Artist here <laughs> still can't get that together. Um, but, you know, I'm, <laughs> I started one, I've started several and then they haven't eventuated. But it will happen. It will happen. Um, so one day I, I will let everyone know that I've got a, a website. I will with bells and whistles, and you know. Just give you shout a shout out to your gallery though that you're working. Yes. Yeah. Well, I I exhibit it with Man Young Gallery, um, and they have five galleries on the Mornington Peninsula in Melbourne. So um, yeah, they look after my work, and it's down at Sorrento mostly. Yeah. Um, but we can take it anywhere. So it, it's it's wonderful to be able to exhibit with that gallery, yeah. People can see your work up, uploaded on that, that site too um, and it's quite easy to make contact with them. We'll be putting all those details mm. up on the um, contact form below this video anyway and uh, so that you can check out Gillian's work yeah. and, you know, she might get a website soon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm sorry, my my camera did go a bit wonky. Oh, it looks artistic. Yeah. We like it. Look at oh, all that beautiful work. So exciting as artists to go and see things up done. I say thank you, Gillian, for showing us your beautiful studio and your art life. And um, we'll be posting this soon with all the details of Gillian's amazing work. And uh, we'll see you soon, Gillian. Thanks again. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Thank you.